Hi there, let's enjoy painting loose watercolour again. In this case we'll go to the Shambles, the streets in York. And uh, we only need two or three brushes for this. We're going to have a large oval mop, a small sword, a small flat and a small round. I'm going to use my little clay shaper at first to apply some masking fluid to the areas I want to be light at the end of the painting for the highlights. Palibo masking gum is a nice one to use because you can see where it's going as it's a blue colour. Remember not to remove it until the painting is totally dry. Unlike most watercolour techniques, with this one we paint the details first, starting loosely and tightening up, and then we paint the background very loosely afterwards. Our sword brushes are very useful for this because we can twist them and as you can see very quickly flick in the shapes and work wet into wet in small areas, gradually tightening up and working all over the, the figures bit by bit, not just concentrating on one at a time, but if you wish you can work on the ones surrounding each other and then as the paint gradually dries you can work back into smaller parts as you wish. Here is a palette of watercolours I like to keep that will do almost any job at all and then so you can see more clearly the small scale versions of them. Don't try to go into too much detail. Watercolour is a beautiful medium and we want to use as we call controlled accident. We want to use the qualities of the watercolour, the transparency the, and the fluidity of it. You can see here in the way I'm painting the figures that's just what I'm trying to do. We're not reproducing a photograph, we're using the photograph as a basis for the painting. Try to let the viewer's eye do some of the work. Don't do everything for him. Let him look, let him enjoy. I prefer to use liquid watercolours from the tubes as you see here, putting them into a palette and then letting them dry. They soon soften down with a little bit of water put on top and I find them much stronger than using the palettes or the blocks. But please don't let me put you off using pans of watercolours. They are delightful and I do actually use those as well. Using a heavyweight 300 pound watercolour paper means I don't have to stretch it in this case. And also it's a rough surface which is very useful for this particular technique because we will be using uh, a dry brush technique over the surface at the end of the painting. Be aware of our usual armoury of things, of textures, of light against dark, of rough against smooth, of cool against warm, but also, especially in watercolour, of lost and found edges, the way that we can blend one edge of watercolour into another, or paint wet over dry to have a hard edge. And of course be very aware of the lights next to the darks, as I'm about to do here, where you'll see that we put the trousers in and then shortly afterwards put a very dark colour on the outside, so that that stands forward. Although we're going to paint the figures a little more carefully than the background, please try and keep your painting all of the same style and looseness. So many artists, amateur artists especially, tend to try and paint the figure or the dog totally differently to the rest of the painting and it stands out like a sore thumb. If you do something in too much detail, it will. If you start loose in a painting, you can finish as tightly as you want, but if you start tightly, you cannot suddenly go back to being loose unless you wash the whole painting off.
Once the figures are completed, it's then time to work on other salient points such as signs or small details, and then, when that lot's dry, you can work straight into your background. In this case, I work some water over the paper surface, and then drop in my aureole in yellow, raw sienna, and a little bit of rose. Don't worry if you go over the figures a little, especially at some edges, because it will blend and make more atmosphere, make them a part of the painting, it will join the whole thing together. Whatever you do, don't try and paint in too much detail. Just get the atmosphere, just get the mood, wet into wet. You can gradually tighten into it as the paint dries. You can gradually work in details as the paint dries out, and even at the end, paint wet onto dry to get hard edges. Do enjoy colour. Obviously one can use a limited palette, one can cut down to a very basic simple palette, but look for colour, especially in shadows. One can make a simple grey by using blues and browns, but also there is much colour in shadow, there's warms and cools. At the moment everything has soft ethereal edges, but as the paint dries we shall start to paint wet over drier paint and therefore the edges will become harder. Mm -hmm. 